I have the image taped to the um, to the window, painter's tape, scotch tape would work as well. This is a Michelle Palmer design called Ranunculus Bouquet. It is um, eight by seven, I don't know whether you can see that, eight by seven. You'll notice that the letters are backwards. This is the way it has to be for punch needle because you're working on the back. So when you flip it over, the letters are going the right way. That's important. So anyways, I cut a piece of fabric. This is called weaver's cloth. It's basically like a, a cotton muslin type of thing. A nice tight weave, because that's what you need for punch needle. I cut it six inches bigger on each side. So first what you do then is tape this on top. End up with a bunch of cat fur on your tape because every place you lay stuff down in this house there's cat fur. And you can see, hopefully you can see that the image comes through. So the window is acting like a light box. There is a fold in the middle there. Not a whole lot I can do about that apparently, but let's see. So then you get your handy dandy Sharpie and your not so handy dandy glasses. Hold on. <laughs> All right, and then it's just a matter of outlining everything you see. Now she, in her designs, um, puts the number, the floss number on the pattern. I'm not gonna write those in. I'll be using this, the, um, the paper, as my guide for what colors go where. But it really is just a matter of outlining everything. And it doesn't particularly matter if your lines aren't as straight as hers. Because with punch needle, it's kind of an inexact science. I mean, you can see her lines aren't all that straight anyway. Well, I think her box here is quite straight. So that's all you do. And then you're ready to punch. So I'm gonna finish this and I will see you on the other side. All right guys, so I have my pattern all inked up and on my fabric, all traced and ready to go. The designer did say she used six strands of floss. I have a medium sized needle on this. I'm afraid it's going to be a little bit tight. I'm not sure if this is gonna work for six strands. I think I've only used three strands of floss previously in the other two patterns I've done. Um, it is going to, punch needle does eat up a lot of floss. I like it that I won't have to separate out the three strands for this pattern, but it's going to eat up a lot of floss. But I would, can always buy extra if I need it. All right, so we're going to start punching the word. She recommends that you that you punch the um, fine details first, so the thin lines. So I'm going to do the word, 
and I'm going to do the lines on the crock here. Um, I'm not going to do a whole lot today, I just want to give you a feel for it. Now one thing you gotta, you got to judge as you're starting this is how far apart to put your punches. Like I said, I've only worked with um, three strands up till now, so six is a lot thicker. So I need to be sure. Michelle did, the designer did mention that she keeps the stitches fairly close together, but keeping in mind that you don't want to step on the previous stitches. People who are good at this, who have done it a lot, can really fly. They, they really move along fast on this. And to turn the corner, I find it easier to actually turn the whole hoop, being careful not to step on the floss with my hand, because you don't want anything kind of holding up the floss. All right, so that's the S. Now I'm going to jump over to the A without cutting the floss, and to do that I'm going to pull the punch needle out and just kind of hold on to that last stitch and pull the floss out. Come over here to the A. I'm going to pull it up a little bit tighter again. So when I'm done with this, I'm just going to snip off all these extra pieces of floss. This is a Morgan hoop that I'm using. It's the one that's recommended for punch needle because it does keep your fabric nice and taut. And you want, that that's an important thing, you want to have it tight as a drum. So again, I'm going to hold that last stitch down in place with my thumb and pull out because I want to jump up here to the cross of the A. Put this back a little bit because I don't need that much. My hand isn't in the way too much for you guys to see. You know, once you get going on this, it's a piece of cake. There is nothing about punch needle that's difficult. It does get done much faster than cross stitch. But you go into it knowing that it does use a lot of floss. Like when I get into filling in the background here and the background here, it's just going to eat up the floss, the skeins of floss. jump over to this L. I've apparently run out of things to say. Hard to believe. Actually, it's not hard to believe. <laughs> Mike is laughing at me. <laughs> yes, dear, do you have a comment? I'm just thinking whether they're going to be able to hear me chewing chocolate chips uh, <laughs> better than they can hear you talking. <laughs> oh, you mean talking because that's a little bit further away from me and you're closer to them. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> chocolate chips are a little sweet treat that we have when we need a little nom of sweet. Just kind of like all the time. Yeah, it's definitely after every meal, that's for sure, and in between meals and <laughs> any time we get up and, and go into the kitchen. Breakfast food. We buy the big bag from Costco. <laughs> <laughs> All right, jumping over to the tea here. I do have another um, video. Oh, boy, it's been a while. Um... probably at least a year uh, since I did that when I first started punch needle. My very first punch needle I, I videotaped 
I recorded so you can um, see what it's like when you start and when you don't really know what you're doing. I'm not that I sh sure that I know a whole lot more now, but I'm definitely more comfortable with it. I got a pair of um, these little snips. I got these from Julie's um, Gulf Coast Stitchers site, gulfcoaststitches.com, because this has, do you see that curve on it? So this allows me to lay the scissors right on the fabric and snip, and I don't have to worry about snipping the stitches themselves. It just snips off that extra floss. As you can see, I'm just going through all these places where I pulled the needle up and then put it back down again. I'm just snipping off all that extra floss. Instead of just throwing it on the floor, or I'd have to just clean it up again anyway. <laughs> and let's look at the front. Hopefully it looks like it's supposed to look. Oh, I'm sorry. Shoot, I just really mocked you. Look at that. It's not very nice. Isn't that pretty? The way those little loops stand straight up there. your little look at punch needle. It's a little tiny tutorial. Should I do more? It's only been 10 minutes. I got yelled at because my six minute video yesterday, somebody said I <laughs> just <laughs> barely got their, their needle threaded and I was finished. You big loser. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I didn't know I had a time requirement. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I can keep going. Now I haven't pulled out all the um, all the floss for this one. I don't even know where the where the thing is for this. So I'm just going to put that in there. I do have a little another little pouchy thing here. This goes in here. My floss all goes in here. So it's all kept nice and neat. This actually matches a yarn bag or a project bag. Oh my God, look at all that cat fur. Do you see all that cat fur on there? <laughs> God. And then it just, when I try and clean it off, it just comes floating right back at me. Um, this matches a project bag that I got at a good yarn back when I was still working there. Isn't that pretty? Okay. Well, let's see, now I have cat fur cat for clean to me. Before I start the next color though, I did tell you I was going to show you my little whale on Pretty Little Hawaii. So you see, I got the whale started. Right now he's a fish out of water, but that's okay. Isn't he adorable? Another, this is going to be another great fun project, but I don't know when I'm going to get to work on it again. That's okay, I have stitches in it. I have it started, fabric chosen. It's all good. All right, so, punch needle. Get back your scissors. The next thing I'm gonna work on are these lines, the outlines of the crock. And according to my directions, let's see. It looks like the outline itself the edge itself is 932, but these lines going through it are 517, and that is what I have here. 
So this pattern, um, shoot, dear, darling, since you haven't started playing your game yet, could I have you a, hand me? I have a furry barnacle. Oh, he has a furry barnacle. Oh, wait, there barnacle. he goes. Could you hand me my iPad, please? Hmm. So here's a here's an interesting um, thing to note while we're waiting for my iPad. These are both 517. What are you reading on my iPad? <laughs> Something from the younger son about his taxes. <laughs> Why do they text me? They know. Don't know. Oh my goodness, you, you write back to him. I don't know the answer to these things. Kids. All right, um, let me find the picture. So, pretty much all of this is DNC, DMC. A lot of, um, a lot of the punch needle designers do use Valdani thread, and Valdani is very convenient to use for this since it comes in the little ball. You can just thread it and kind of go. You don't have to re cut off more floss and re-thread when you run out. This one, this, you know, Michelle Palmer says that she, um, she likes using the DMC because there's so many different colors she feels like she can really paint with floss. And that's what you see here. There's a lot of flow of colors through this pattern. She does not line this out in her pattern. You'll, you will see I don't have any lines for any of that different coloration up here in the, you know, in the background. So um, she kind of encourages her people doing this to just flow with the color. I'm a little bit more paint by number type of person, <laughs> so we shall see. But what I wanted to point out in the middle of the flowers here, this is um, DMC, um, I think it's variations, they're variegated floss. So there's two different colors that are used here. I have ordered this, it is coming. Um, so I won't be able to work on those. These flowers, the, the total, all of them, well, I guess except for the center, they're all done in that variegated floss. Aren't those pretty? So I am working down here on the pottery, and I'm gonna be working on 515, this bright blue. But what I wanted to show you, both 517, I'm sorry, 517, not 515. This is a skein that I've had in my stash apparently for a while. One that didn't disappear when I gave my DMC away. You can see the old, um, the old labels, no barcode on them. And this is the newer one. Can you see on the camera there the difference in the dye lots? This one is a much more, I think, turquoisey. It, it, it heads towards the yellow more than this one. One of the things you deal with whenever you're, you have skeins this old, I'm going to use the new one so that if I run out and need more, I'm more likely to have a matching dye lot. So, something to keep in mind always. I found there was another, um, some other floss I pulled out. I had four skeins of it for one of these other projects. So many projects, right? And two of the skeins were one dye lot and two of the skeins were another dye lot and they both seemed to be newer skeins. They both had the newer labels on them, um, but the dye lots were obviously different. All right, so again, pull out a ton. process threading these needles. It's not hard necessarily. But it is a two-step process. I know there are other needles out there, the CTR punch needles, where it's not quite as much of a process. 
but this is the one I have. So you bring it up through the barrel of the needle and then you can see the little eye there on the needle itself. You have to stick your threader through there and then bring it through. And you can see it's fighting me a little bit bringing both both um, both sides of the floss through. I'm not sure what words to use there. All right, put the threader away so we don't use it, don't lose it. Pull this back out. You just have to leave a little tiny tail, like a half inch or so. And I'm going to work across this line here. So let's look at this. This is a mess. It's not punching. And I don't know whether it's because this is too tight, but look at that, it didn't stay down through. I don't know whether it's because well, it worked fine with the other color. Let's try that again. stay down in there. All right, punch needle problems in real time here. I may not be able to use this needle. I may have to get a large size. It's funny that it worked fine with for that one. Just going too close. I don't feel like I am. No, it's not. Shoot. Let me pull that down. All right, this is my last time to try. Yeah, the problem is so whenever you go, like it's supposed to advance the floss, right, down through the needle. And if it doesn't do that, then it's going to just pull out. Shoot. Well, look. See, it's not a nice, neat little stitch like these. Can you see that? All right, I think I'm going to have to call it quits here and buy the large size. Now the. The thing about these is these needle tips are interchangeable. That's why I like these. So this is the small tip. What I have in here is the medium tip. So I don't have to get a whole new punch needle. I just have to get a new tip. And Amazon sells them. I just put an Amazon order in this morning too. Darn. Another little thing that I like about these needles so this is the different settings and this relates to how big of a loop you have on the other side. So the one is a fairly small loop, but when I'm done, I can bring this down and the needle is no longer sticking out there. All right, that is all for me right now. I will see you probably at some point tomorrow, probably just one tomorrow. I have to kind of regroup and see what's left. But we know that at least the fractal is left because Lynette started the fractal. So that means I have to start the fractal. Thanks, Lynette. <laughs> Love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.